guys, what's going on? It's my Weekly. Whoa! Whoa! Another delicious intro to Massive at Joe's Weekly Word, episode 127, Nevos. That would be the truth if you were wearing a fucking shirt. But you ain't. You're wearing a TMJ apparel muscle tank, man. Tank shirt. You're top. out of. St come this way. You're like out of. You're out of. Mate, well, fuck. I, I can't. Too, too big. You know. Too yeah, big, fine, this I'll boy. I'll sit back a little bit. Ah, <sighs> We both don't fit in the screen. What's I going know. on? We're gonna need a, we're gonna need like a fucking bigger angle zoom lens. Wide lens. Non wide. That's the one. Wide angle lens. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Topics of discussion. Mm. All right. <coughs> Let me clear my throat. <laughs> back in <st> back <laughs> in stock. New products coming soon. Shaker takeover. Australia Day sale. Ask Neve. Story time with Neve. Jam packed episode of Weekly Word. We've got 17 questions in Ask Neve, and we're gonna get through each and every one of them this week as well. First topic of discussion. I'm going to say it here first, but I'm just going to mention it later. Yeah. If you've got a question for Ask Neve, because I've seen a lot of people asking in the comment section, how do I ask a question for Ask Neve? Yes. You simply put hashtag Ask Neve. It's very easy. And then write your comments in the YouTube Yeah, because section. I've got I've got a few here. Obviously, these are how the YouTube comments come through, because Dillard just <coughs> does like a search on the Ask Neve hashtag, prints them out. But then I've got a few that have been sent by email yeah. as well. And this is a massive pain in the ass for us, really, guys. Yeah, so because I have to let them sit there in my like my email inbox for like... For a week. For a week, and it really pisses me off. You, it messes with So your this is the last time, because I like to have a clean inbox at the end of the day. You do. Nothing like a clean box. Mm. So what you got to do <laughs> is you've got to... <laughs> You've got to do that hashtag and then ask the question. Yeah, simple. And then you get an Ask Neve question. If you do it again next week, fuck you. Fuck you. It's getting deleted. We ain't, print, we ain't printing the emails off next week. It's man. getting deleted. So, so I, I, I've, let you, I've let it slide. Yeah. Next week, do it properly. First topic of discussion. Back in stock. Ooh. I think it's worthy of a comment this week. I think before we get back into the back in stocks, we need to look at the back at the chops. The chop shop in particular. Look at Robbie, man. Look at some. Look at that shit, man. Look at that. You know what I love about Robbie and the way that because because it's been a, it's been a joint project yeah. between myself and Robbie from Robbie's Chop Shop, the Fury Fade. It mm -hmm. has evolved over the years. Yeah. And you know what I love most about the Fury Fade at the moment is it's completely asymmetrical. If you look on this side, it looks like I've got one style of hair, mm -hmm. and if you look on this side, completely different style. Yep. Amazing. If you're in the ADL, you've got to go see my man Rob, man. Ask him for the Fury Fade. He also does the Neve, which is... Which is uh, very, very simple. Quite completely, simple. Completely <laughs> symmetrical. <laughs> it doesn't matter which side you look, it's the same fucking head. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's go. But only someone with the magic of Robbie can produce that kind of outcome. Yeah. yeah. All right, so back in stock. <laughs> uh, MTS Way, all flavors, except for peanut butter, because cookies and cream. Yeah, so we are stocked the fuck up with, uh, with MTS Way. 12 flavors in stock. The only one that's missing uh, is peanut butter, cookies and cream yep. at the moment. And then there's the ice cream sandwich, which still won't be here for a couple of months. That's, yeah. that's a brand new flavor. Yep. Um, uh, but man, like 12 flavors. Stocked up. Too many to choose from, I think. Too much sauce. Yeah. Yeah, but it will sell out. It always sells out. So we're stocked up at the moment. At, at, well, actually, while we're recording this video, by yeah. the time this video goes live, we'll probably be out of one or two of them. So stock, if you stocked can, up, stock the fuck up though. If you can, when's it going live? It's live. They're, live. They're up. Boom. And boom. It's ready. My body's ready. Good. The MTS way is ready. Next topic of discussion. Uh, new products. Yep. Hit them. I don't really know what I'm saying these because most of them are out of stock already. Well, but, but they are technically new. All right. So Staunch, yep. uh, which is Callum Von Moga's, uh Brand, supplement brand, Staunch Nation to be exact. So Koala Freak, which is your high stim pre. Very high stim. Which I'm a massive fan of. I hate it. Yep. Uh, pre OG. Yep. Which I guess Joe, you'd say pre original is That's like cool. is pre OG is sort of like a half scoop of Koala Freak. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, pre zero stim. Fantastic products. Love this one. Used it last night. I think it was amazing. It's really good. Mm. Obviously zero stim pre workout. Yep. But I use it as a pump formula. So you stacked it. With Ghost Legend actually last there night, go. so there Definitely you go. Very stackable, mm. very stackable. Uh, B sub A plus hydration. Yep. And creatine, creatine five. And creatine five, five types of creatine. Very cool supplement range. Uh, launched on Monday this week. We have already sold out of Koala Freak, and we're pretty close to selling out of Pre Original as well. 
Well, the thing uh, is, well, is, we're pretty close to selling out of everything. Yeah. Really. The thing is, is, we bought as much as we could. Yeah. So um, we always yeah. do. But yeah, that's the issue. Is it just it's very supply, hot at the moment. So. Supply chain logistics, guys. Yep. You know how it is. Mm-hmm. Next. Uh, Team J Elite One Liter Shakers. Oh, so I've got one here. Boys. Uh, I didn't actually know I was drinking out of it until big I went. Big shaker for a big boy. Really big. I just went uh, and got it. And I'm like, fuck, the shaker feels a bit bigger than normal. And then it realized is. it was actually, but it's, it's, it's sort of the same size. Yeah. It's just longer. So it's not fatter, it's just longer. Feels a bit bigger than normal, hey? Yeah. That you've heard that one before. Yeah, just. <laughs> and then a few uh, lucky, <laughs> lucky pushy cats <laughs> hop around for. They hop on the workbench. Oh, shit, the pants. Uh, the cool thing with these one liter shaker guys is if you don't have a normal size, you, you just spill <laughs> shit all over the fucking. Faulty product. <laughs> you haven't How's the quality on? control on this shit? <laughs> Um, the cool thing with these shakers are, if you don't have an original shaker, it looks exactly the same. Yeah. So they're, they're practically exactly the same shape. Um, they're just longer, so you can fit more liquid oh, in Oh, that there. fucking echoes back, third week in a row. But, no, but, I'm, but it's a segue <laughs> to something else. The real cool thing is the lids are interchangeable between mm. the different sizes. Yep. So if you have, if you already have a bunch of lids, obviously you've got the 700 mil shakers, you can use those lids on a new one liter shaker. The black and the clear. Yeah. Clear, I'm going to clear with a black lid. Very, very cool. So you can go black on black if you want. You can, you can, it's completely interchangeable. You can even change the, I didn't even know this until Boss Joss to, uh, told me, but you can actually take the cap, like that part there, you can take that, it comes completely off, and you can change the colours of the cap. Only Josh would do that. So you can literally make your own shaker as, yep. you, as you truly desire. Next topic of discussion. Uh, coming soon. Hit him. Uh, coming soon, Team J Apparel two tone shorts, black on black. Do you have them on at the moment? I do. You do? Do you want to show the viewers? Oh, I, I think that. you should. I reckon we can get some zoom and focus action. So, two tone, our two tone shorts, our world famous Team J Apparel two tone shorts, now come in a non two tone version. <laughs> so you black on black. So, this in the other ones, these are, this patch is red. Yeah. So Technically, they are two tone though, because they've got like the, the real tight weave dry fit polyester on the front. How's the quads Boom. looking? Boom! How's the quads Boom. looking? Boom! Look out! Uh, and then on the back, they've got like the old school, uh, like a, a looser mesh on the back. So technically, they are still two tone. And they're very, so they're very breathable with the TMJ logo. Very cool. They're my favourite shorts. I love the two tone shorts. Mm. So I need to get myself a couple of those. Anyway, those are coming soon. Those will be launching within the next week for you guys. Moving right along, Big Knee. Uh, creation. Yep. So we've got Beta Pure, which is your Beta Alanine, Pure Beta Alanine supplement. Yes. Uh, Cluster Pure. Mm -hmm. Cluster Dextrin. You right there? Need yeah, just, uh, I've got a one liter shaker full of shit for you if you like. Cluster Dextrin. Uh, yeah, abs absolutely. The uh, registered, trademarked, highly branched, cyclic dextrin, cluster dextrin. Mm -hmm. Going to be uh, in the cluster pure from creation. Yep. And uh, laxapure, which is laxagenin. Well, it, technically, it's, kind of, it's, it's very cool. So what creation are doing here with laxapure is they're taking laxagenin, uh, in a 50 milligram dose, and you can't, uh, laxagen, and obviously because the dosages are so small, when you put it in powder, you need to uh, cut it with, uh, with an ingredient just to beef up the volume. So what most companies do is they use a cheap filler like maltodextrin. Uh, creation are using cluster dextrin. So the same stuff in cluster pure, they're using in laxo pure to get you in like a one gram scoop, you'll have 950 milligrams of uh, cluster dextrin and 50 milligrams of laxagen. Very, very cool shit. And what, what do they say? What's that? Your price is way too high, you gotta cut it. You gotta cut it. Mm. Anyway, those three uh, supplements will be available within the next month from creation. And then? And then MTS Way Espresso Macchiato. Is that how it's pronounced? Macchiato? It does. Yeah, that is how it's pronounced. So, uh, for, for, we should probably tell the YouTubers, because mm. these are out, these are the OG yeah. people right here. Yeah. So, it's available now. We, yeah. we popped it up on the website. Hasn't, wasn't, it technically hasn't launched. Hasn't officially launched. We haven't isn't, done isn't officially going to launch until the 28th. Why so long? Is it the 28th? Monday after next? I think it's the 28th. Why are you waiting so long? Because we're supposed to. Who? It's the rules, man. Who said? I don't make up the rules. Don't shoot the messenger. Who's made that I'm rule just, up? I'm, I'm just, I'm just. You've made the fucking rule up and then you're trying to blame. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, that's the rules. All right. 
28th, it doesn't launch until, but uh, but it is available if you hop on massivejoes.com. <laughs> on the 18th. You can, you can on the 18th. You can pick some up. We've just picked a magical date of the launch date. And <laughs> fucking time that is the most fucked up launch I've ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, shit, the bed. Right, Seems next, like one of next. fucking marketing manager Shane's finest work next right there. Next topic of discussion. Uh, shake a takeover. Hit him, baby. So this weekend, we're yep. doing uh, the Massive Joe's Shaker Takeover. So yep. take in any of your, or oh, any uh, competitor's brand, um, competitor's store. That's really what we're after. Any we're after competitor's Shaker. Yeah. So we take them and we have a big fucking tribal burn off. Mm. Let that, uh, let those. <laughs> it's very symbolic. Let those. Uh, Sacrificial shakers. What's it called? <laughs> I don't know. What are you, that make-believe thing. Climate change. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Make believe thing. <laughs> <laughs> that make believe thing. Climate change. Oh, fuck. So, uh, yeah, That's just add. can of worms you've opened up there. Just right? adding to that um, climate yeah. change and uh, the greenhouse gases and the hole in the ozone layer, which was so big in fucking primary school, and everyone seems to have forgotten about. Well, they haven't forgotten about it. It's healed up because we've stopped using CFCs in our fucking space. Oh, there we go. Right. Fuck. Oh, until we had our shaker take <laughs> until we've had our shaker takeovers. Anyway, shaker takeover happening this weekend at all massive Joe's retail stores. Just keep in mind, guys, this is not on the one liter shakers. This is going to be on the OG uh, 700 mil shakers. Mm. Maximum three shakers per customer. You have to be a loyalty member. If you're not, it's no big deal. Just sign up when you come into store mm -hmm. and swap your shakers over. Yep. No strings. No. Catches. They can't be. Um, yeah. they, and they can't be. Let's just make a few. Like they can't be like. A Mount Franklin or a Powerade bottle, or no, they can't. Be a they can't be a massive Joe's bottle. They have to be our competitors. Like that. Don't 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 go full retail. Yep. Next topic of discussion. Uh, Australia Day sale. Yes. Now this is cool, man. This is cool. It's going down next Monday. It starts. So we're going to run our Australia Day sale over a whole week um, this year because it's we're doing it slightly differently. So what we've done in the past is we've done like a discount on Australian brands and whatnot. What we're doing this year is it's going to start next Monday and it's going to run right up until the, the Sunday after. So you guys have got a full week and it's going to be money can't buy gift with purchase. So we got some cool shit happening. I probably should have. Should I go grab them? Should no, them no. No. Okay. I'm just going to tell you guys, you're not going to see them, but I'm going to tell you. So what it's going to be is uh, spend over 150 in store or online. And obviously if it's online, you guys get free shipping and a free shake already. But you're also going to get a limited edition TMJ apparel shaker stubby holder. Fuck. <laughs> so fucking cool. Uh, that's that, that's not it. We then have another tier. If you spend two fifty, you're also going to get, and I've shown this on uh, on Snap and uh, an Instagram story a couple of times. You're also going to get a limited edition TMJ Apparel Australia Day T mm -hmm. in the white on blue colorway. Dodger blue. M money cannot buy. So these will never be for sale. The only time you'll be able to get this colorway in this style and this design is next next week with the Australia Day sale. There's only a limited run. So and there's, yeah, there's limited. Well, how many do we end up doing? Right? 200. Five, five, two, 200? Two, 250? Two, 250. I can't even remember. 250, there's, no, there's, 252 we did. Yeah? That's fine. Yeah. Right? yeah. 252. So there's a limited number and it's once they're gone, they're gone. <coughs> and the only way you can get them is to spend 250 or more online or in store during next week. Mm. That's part of the Australia Day sale. It's yep. epic. Yep. Next topic of discussion. Uh, ask Neve. 17 questions for Ask Neve this week. We're going to get straight. We might even have to rapid fire some of these. Yeah. I'm going to hit the email questions first. All right, because a couple right. of email ones are very similar. Okay. Andy Nyland. Hey, guys. Andy from Birmingham, England, which is where Body Power is. You've yep. been to Birmingham before. Yep. I've been a couple of times. Firstly, thanks for all the uploads. Much appreciated. What travel plans do you have for 2018? In the USA and UK, uploads are great. Hope to catch you guys at Body Power 10th year anniversary if you go. Thoughts please on glucose disposal agents and does one product stand out from the crowd? Cheers, Andy. Uh, we've got a lot of things booked in for Australia this year. Um, I guess it's just yeah, up to you, what? just Seth, about your travel plans. Look, man, I, I would, uh, Andy, I would love to get to... Or yours and Joel's travel plans, or yours and my travel plans, or yours and yeah. Josh's travel yeah. plans, whoever I goes. would love to, ideally, I would love to get to Body Power again this year. Um, I, you know, if I do end up going, I probably will take Asher with me again. Um, just because she has a big fan base over in the UK and it was really successful for her last year. 
Um, and we won't be, you know, exhibiting with a booth or whatnot. We'll do something like we've done the last couple mm. of years with the guys from A-List Nutrition and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, I, ideally, I do want to go to Body Power. And definitely uh, TMJ in the USA again, once again, and probably this year, it'll be Big Nebos coming along. Um, so, you know, that's the plan. Absolutely. So, you know, just, it just depends. I oh, mean... Man, we have a crazy, crazy year this year. We actually looked at the calendar earlier this week, yeah. and we were like, "Fuck!" Because the, uh, <laughs> like. especially with the amount of the uh, the amount <clears throat> of shows that are here in Australia this yeah, year, expos and, and, and the things that we've got planned as a business. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's, it's going to be yeah. crazy. So, uh, but there's no excuse, you know. If we can make it happen, we'll make it happen. Thoughts on glucose disposal agents? Does one product stand out from the crowd? Uh, I, I'm a massive fan of them because yeah. I'm very insulin resistant. You are. So um, I've always, it's not really a glucose dispo disposal agent, but I've always used T432, yeah. um, which has your cinnamon in there as well, cinnamon extract in there. Which does have, have insulin affecting uh, properties. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I use that all the time. Um, but, and I've, uh, they're really the only one I've used is the Blackstone Labs, uh, what's called? Glycolog. Uh, Glycolog. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, I was a fan of. Um, I haven't used... Uh, you're a fan of the Blackstone Labs one and the uh, Core I've one. I've used all of them. Yeah. That, that we have, at least. Glycolog, RPG, and Core Load. Mm. Um, I'm a huge fan of them, man. As a matter of fact, your question's quite timely because my rural review on Core Load should be going live. If it's not live already, it should be live in the next day mm. or so. Um, and I go balls deep in Core Load, which I personally think is the best yeah. GDA on the market. I just wanted to say the reason I haven't used it or yeah. the reason I don't use them is because yeah. I don't have carbs. So there's no, or if I do, it's like two, it's one banana in a smoothie, which is no real use because I'm, I'm not going to be, I've got no real risk of my body storing my carbs as body fat. So that's the reason I don't particularly use them is because I don't, Eat enough, carb eat enough carbs to warrant it. Julian Salam. Hey guys, Julian from Brisbane here, Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. I'm in an unusual spot with my body currently. I used to be really overweight. I'm 180 centimeters tall and used to weigh 94 kilos with little to no muscle mass. I dropped a lot of weight by dieting and exercising, mostly doing cardio, after I got to about 80 kilos and looked skinny fat and started to get into some strength training. It's been about a year since I started. I'm currently 78 kilos and some decent lean muscle. Isn't that interesting? He's dropped more weight, but mm. his body composition has improved. Mm. Bravo, Julian. Uh, the only thing that bothers me is I still have a slight gut remaining from when I was overweight. I would like to increase my muscle mass, but I'm paranoid that if I put myself at a high caloric surplus in order to increase my muscle mass, that I will be setting myself back with trying to get rid of my gut. My workout routine currently is pretty standard bro split, training a different muscle group four times a week, one day on, one day off, and usually 20 to 30 minutes of cardio on an elliptical trainer after each workout. Is there any routine supplement or change that you guys can suggest for me? Thanks and stay massive. Um, there's a couple things. Uh, you don't need to be put yourself in a high caloric surplus, in no. which will put on body fat. As we no, said no. Sort of last week, we, we mentioned a few times, but even if it's a 50 or 100 calories in a surplus, you're still going to be giving yourself more calories to help put on weight and, and put on muscle mass. Mm -hmm. So that's the one thing is you don't need to go and put yourself in 500, which I used to do back in the day, or, and Joe's done as always, just put yourself in that much of a surplus that you're just going to put fat on. Your body can't. There's no way your body can actually use that many calories to put on muscle. It's just going to get stored as fat. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Yep. Um, number two, me personally, Joe is very different to me, but me personally, I've found the best fat loss results have come from me from, me from multiple muscle group training, mm -hmm. so push-pull legs. Mm -hmm. I just find when I'm doing stuff like just training biceps, which you're a big fan of, or mm -hmm. just training triceps, or mm -hmm. just training shoulders, mm -hmm. I didn't lose body fat at a fast enough rate mm -hmm. or I did just didn't I just didn't burn enough calories during those sessions yeah. so that's why I do push pull legs and that's one of my the major factors in push pull legs is because I, I recruit more muscle groups and I'm burning more calories in those sessions mm. um, so that could be something as well you look at in, in a bro split um, maybe you want to change it up to a push pull leg or maybe you want to change it up slightly to a different to a different training split mm -hmm. Um, that could be something I'd look at. And also uh, doing 20 to 30 minutes of cardio after each workout. Um, I mean, yeah, that's good. But as once again, your body gets very used to doing those kind of things. Um, maybe throwing in some HIIT workouts, some HIIT sessions. Um, yeah, just even, even if it's not just the elliptical, 
um, just different different forms of, of training. Um, John and I used to do a bit of Tabata post-workout. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, hit training, sleds, tires, yep. battle ropes, those kind of things. So yeah. There you go. Mike Welters. Hi, no Joe. Hi, I was gonna say you know and no and Jeeve. No and Jeeve. That would be that would ask, be uh, ask, Jeeve. ask Jeeves. Ask Jeeves. Hi Neve and Joe. Mike from Sittard, the Netherlands here. He's Dutch. Mm. Hello, Mike. Long time follower, first time question answer, uh, asker, welcome. Uh, my question is regarding FIBO 2018 in Cologne, Germany. Are you guys from Massive Joe's attending FIBO? I heard you guys were going to Body Power UK, so I wondered if you would attend FIBO as well. Would love to meet you all and pick up some swag. Thanks and stay massive. Uh, I really don't think FIBO is on our list. FIBO is not on our list, uh, Mike, and the reason why is because it's too close to the Australian expos that we exhibit at, namely the Arnold Classic Australia and the Sydney Fitness Show. Mm -hmm. It's literally like, boom, smack bang in the middle of it, um, which is not good for us because that is a ridiculous time of year. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so we, we won't be coming to FIBO, man. It is something I've always wanted to do, but at the moment it's just not a priority for us right now. Um, I will point out, though, that if you ever want to pick up some swag, massivejoys.com, man. Mm. We ship all over the world. To Germany in particular. No, mm. where is it? Netherlands. Yeah. To the Netherlands is no problem. And if you spend over 100 Australian dollars, it ships free. Yeah, and free. it's express. Free DHL express shipping, so. so. You can pick up swag anytime. But hopefully one day we do make it to so You can power. pick up a jumper and a t-shirt, get free shipping. Craig Mayer. What up, big boys? Craig from Kariong, New South Wales in Australia. I've lost 40 kilos over a couple of years and got real lean, but I ended up with a bit of loose extra skin all over and it makes me feel like I'm still fatter than I am. My question is, do either of you know of any supplements or anything other than surgery to reduce the amount of loose skin I have or anything to re-elasticate the skin? Uh, no. No? No. It depends how old you are, Craig. Um, you know, you haven't mentioned your age there. If you're, you know, I'd, I'd say like, you know, probably lower than mid thirties, your, your skin is still gonna have a fair bit of elasticity with it. And I mean, you're, you're talking 40 kilos, so it's, a, it's quite a significant weight loss, but it's not like someone who's lost like, you know, 80 kilos, mm. which we have seen before, where it's, you know, that's a lot of elasticity mm. to put back in. Um, so it depends on your age, man. But unfortunately, you know, if it is something where you have lost skin elasticity and it's just, it's just not getting better, you know, surgery really is the only option. Mm. In it. Fight 2913. Hey guys, Richie from North Carolina, United States. Hey big boys, when you started TMJ, what made you decide the supplement industry was the best business for you? Did you already have knowledge or experience in that field? Also, what do you guys do as a hobby when not lifting? Any sports, hunting, video games, etc.? For you, big boy. What made you when you started Master Joe's? Well, you yeah, what made you get into the supplement industry as well? Um, so I, I originally started my own supplement line or well, supplement business, which was very small and nothing at all really. But um, I started that originally because I, supplements were just something I'd always used since I was 18, 19. Um, I sort of went through that stage where I guess all of us who have more muscle tone than our friends, I guess you'd say. Yeah. Um, would ask you for advice, yeah. ask you for diet advice, ask you for training advice. Mm. They see you sipping on your protein shake, they see you drinking your pre-workout. Like you go train with your mates obviously at your local gym and, and you're there sipping on an intra workout BCAA and you're having your post-workout shake afterwards and mm. you're doing your this and you're doing that. They start asking you questions and I guess um, a lot of people used to ask me a lot about supplement advice and supplements yeah. and, and it was just something I was very keen on because yeah. I could see the benefits for myself from my training. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something, yeah, I always liked, it's something um, yeah, I guess a lot of my mates spent their money on alcohol and drugs, mm -hmm. um, each to their own. I spent it on supplements, so. And gym memberships. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, mum used to get me vouchers for supplements for my uh, birthday and stuff like that. So it's just always something that, um, yeah, that I, uh, that I enjoyed. And then I guess, as Joe's always said, if you can do what you love as a job, then you're not working a day in your life. So that's why yeah. I started that. And then, yeah, then the position came up with Joe, so I started applied for that because yep. I can see more potential and the sort of long-term future. And um, yeah, so that's 
how I got into it. Absolutely. And my, my story is very similar, Richie. I actually did a podcast where I tell the, the entire story. Um, it's a Rooster Radio podcast. So if you go on Google Rooster Radio Joseph Menzel, um, you'll find a link to it and you can, you can go and check it out because it's, it's quite an interesting story. I'm not going to go balls deep into it here, but it's very similar to Neve's story. Um, what do you guys do as a hobby when not lifting? Um... Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Think about lifting. Yeah, I honestly, yeah. like m I'm mine and day, mine, mine and Joe's days, like during the week, mm. are pretty much exactly the same. Like yeah. we'll wake up, I'll go to F45. Joe will go on his dare master. I'll go for Dem a walk with yes. with Asher or whatever. Yeah. Then we both come to work from sort of nine eight thirty nine till six. Yeah. Then we go train from seven till nine ish. Yeah. Or I'll go walk from, or I'll go walk off my dog after work, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, I mean, by the time you eat, cook, shower, do your washing, do your laundry, whatever, it's fucking eleven o'clock. So yeah. Um, I mean, I watch a bit of Netflix, watch a movie, yeah. something just to chill out at night. That's yeah. how I relax. Yeah. I've tried reading books, but I fucking, as I was saying to Joe the other day, like, I've tried reading books and stuff like that. I just, I can't, ADHD. I can't read more than half a page now. Yeah. Just uh, my attention just is all over the place so yeah. um yeah I, I i on weekends i catch up with joe and train or i catch up with joe and eat or mm. i catch up with mates who i don't get to see during the week and we train so that, yeah. everything about my life really is is around the gym or i go out for lunch with mates and then or go train and then go out for lunch with mates afterwards or man we live this life what can i say yeah. like we actually live this life unlike like, most people in the southern yeah. industry like last weekend <laughs> i caught up what with we do. last weekend i went to robbie's on saturday yep. robbie's chop shop on saturday yeah and then afterwards just met adil and frank who both work at Massive Joe's yep. and um, yeah, just had a coffee, like shit like that, just. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm very similar, man. I do have, have hobbies outside of, um, you know, uh, the, the industry, but they're still health and fitness based. In winter, I like going, going snowboarding. In summer, I like going wakeboarding. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get to do it very often, obviously, because of, because of the whole time thing. Um, but uh, but I guess those are kind of my That's my the thing, is stuff inside. like going for a walk on the beach or taking my dog for a walk, I don't see that as cardio or training. I see that as a time, like, it lets me... Downtime. It's downtime for me. Yeah. It lets me zone out, lets me think, lets me relax. Exactly. I don't take my phone with me, so really? generally. Oh, really so at least I'm not sitting there fucking looking through Instagram, so... Mm -hmm. V8 Dino. Hey, fellas, Matt here from <coughs> Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. I was wondering, Joe, since you are a men's physique competitor where a small tight waist is essential, do you purposely not do heavy compounds such as heavy squats that could potentially thicken up your waist unwantingly? Thanks, he can stay massive. Dilla, go ahead and put up the uh, photo I posted on Instagram earlier this week, Transformation mm. Tuesday, uh, so, that, uh, so that I have the actual photographic proof for Matt of the difference between squatting and deadlifting and benching heavy and not squatting, deadlifting and benching heavy. In 2016, I squatted heavy, deadlifted heavy, benched heavy, and my waist exploded. Uh, 2017, I got rid of all my heavy compound lifts, and you can see from the photographic evidence that my waist came down significantly. It was actually, it was actually close to two inches on stage. Mm. So uh, to answer your question, yes, I stay the fuck away. From, uh, from the heavy compound lifts because it definitely thickened up my waist mm. when I did it. Uh, trudge in. Hey, boys. Trudge from Bundaberg, Queensland. Apparently, they make some good rum up there. Mm. That's what I've been told. Don't drink rum. If I'm not, if I'm not drinking Bundy, I'm thinking Bundy. <laughs> <laughs> Quick question about fasted cardio and whether taking BCAAs during this has any effect on the, any effect on the amount of fat that is burnt during the cardio workout. I realize calorie deficit is the overriding factor in fat loss, but if some fasted list is going to help even a little, I'm happy to do it. Thanks for the constant stream of helpful info. Um... I mean, obviously, everyone has differing opinions on this. Um, I I don't use it. I don't uh -huh. use BCAAs while I'm while I'm doing my cardio in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'll have a pre work. I'll have a fat burner, but I won't have any BCAAs while I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Do you? I uh, you know what? I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to say uh, link is down in the description box for you, Trudge, because we've written a supplement simplified article on BCA. It's like a two minute read. It'll take you like literally 100 seconds to read through it. You need to go check it out because we go balls deep into BCAAs briefly balls. Just mm. just 
just like just two, the tip. Two pumps. The tip. Um, and uh, BCAAs, if you take BCAAs during any type of workout, they actually increase your rate of fat loss. And there is a lot of science now that proves that that is the case, is you get better body composition. So you actually increase your rate of fat loss. Mm. So I would, you know, if you're trying to get, you know, the best out of your list cardio sessions, it's actually beneficial that you take BCAAs. On the other hand, then you get a, a reduction in, in muscle loss as well. And the two things are related. BCAAs effectively act as like an internal muscle armor. So they protect your body from going after muscle protein as an energy source when you're doing fasted cardio first thing in the morning. And because your body can't go after muscle protein as, as an energy source, it goes after more body fat because it has to get energy from somewhere. Mm. Alan Kim. Hey, fellas. Alan from Toronto, Canada. The Six. Running through the Six with my... Rolls. I'm thinking, sorry, I was just thinking about um, another great link. Turn the Six upside down, it's a nine now. Yeah. yeah he, d he raps a lot about the Six mm. in Toronto. Mm. Um, never been there, but would love to go. <laughs> Is it just me or has CrossFit been pumping out amazing physiques continually no mass monsters but the majority are muscular and lean is there something to the high intensity olympic lifts met cons and the body responds well to over typical bodybuilding and do frequent question askers need to keep writing our city and country yes yes you do alan except for barney on because we know that mm. uh, well no actually because barney he 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 is a man of he's he, where in the world is barney on because mm. he moves a lot. So, no, everyone has to tell us where they're from. Yep. Because you may, you may be asking a question on holiday. If, you, if you get to Barney Ong level, then we'll know. But, but um, like I'm saying, even Barney, we don't know. He's I supposed mean, to be in Melbourne, but next, next I know he's in fucking China. Yeah. And then he's in bloody uh, uh, Japan. Well, he's from Malaysia, so he could be there too. And he goes to Malaysia every now and again. Yeah. Is he from Malaysia? <laughs> <laughs> Chinese. Sorry. I'm sorry, Barney. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just taking the piss party. All right, answer the question from Alan um, from the six. Yeah, I think they pump out amazing physiques. I'm a big fan of CrossFit physiques because they're just that muscular, lean. I'm talking like top <laughs> level, top class. Yeah, well class CrossFitters. Yeah. Yeah, I mean your average CrossFit. Uh, this isn't being rude to anyone, but like your average like sort of CrossFit member. Yeah. Doesn't really have that impressive physique. Yeah. No. I'm talking about your top CrossFit games have phenomenal physiques. Yeah. Um, it's, it's because of the, their training, their dieting, but then you gotta just everything. See, Alan, you've got to compare apples with apples, man. If you're talking about the top CrossFit athletes, you need to compare them to the top bodybuilders as well yeah. and the top physique athletes. And I think if you're comparing apples with apples, the physique athletes and bodybuilders obviously look uh, let's, let's compare apples to apples. <coughs> I think yeah. if you compare your average gym yeah. to an average CrossFit gym, yeah. your average gym will have yes. better physiques than your average CrossFit I gym. I agree, 100%. Yeah, so, so, so you need to, you need to yeah. make the direct comparison. So yeah, they d but th uh, that's the thing is I could be a top level swimmer, mm -hmm. an Olympic swimmer, and have a fucking amazing, amazing physique. physique with shoulders and a fucking back as big as a barn door. But most swimmers. Yeah, like you, yeah. you go and look at your, your sprint cyclists, I mean you go and look at your, who have legs like fucking tree trunks, and you go look at your cyclists on the road, and mm. then yeah, they look, obviously you don't look like they're trained. But yeah, it's, it's, it, I've, yeah. As your question, I think the CrossFit physiques are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. and I've always been a big fan of that muscular looking CrossFit physique. Um, what was the second thing you said? Uh, do you think that the body responds well over typical bodybuilding to like the stuff that CrossFit is doing, holly lifts and metcons and shit like that? Um, I think it's good to incorporate both really. Yeah. But I mean, you, you see, once again, let's go back to bodybuilders. I mean, you see bodybuilders who have phenomenal physiques mm. and I, I'd say, 1% of them have ever done a CrossFit workout or a CrossFit Metcon. Exactly. Never probably done high intensity cardio. Mm. Jalil, J4YL1L, Jalil in the ADL. What's happening, you fetty fetty big boys? Mm. The past two days, I've been getting constant muscle twitch in my right bicep. When I'm sitting or resting, I hate the, you yeah. know, you, get the, you yeah. get the twitch. It doesn't hurt or anything, but it's very weird seeing and feeling my bicep contracting itself. Have you guys experienced this in the past? Should I just let it be and see if it goes away, or should I be worried and visit the doc? Yeah, just should it just twitch, involuntary muscle twitches. Yeah, happen. it'll go away. It's, it's got to do with nerves, man. Um, but it goes away. I get them every now and again. I probably get like one a week. Mm. And just random, like sometimes it would be a tricep, sometimes it would be a quad. Sometimes it'll be a bicep. I get them in my I get in my triceps a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's just a, it's just a muscle twitch. Don't mm. stress, man. It'll go away real quick. Cliff Madlin, 
Big boys, Cliff from the ADL. In regards to big compound lifts, I seem to have no problem with deads and squats. Easily into the 220 and 250. Ooh, fuck, Cliff strong. Cliff making gains. 220 kg deads and 250 kg squats. But I seem to struggle to bench large numbers. Can put up 80 kilos, but not too much more. Do you boys have any tips to help get those numbers up? Also, any plans for a Massive Joe's meal service like ReadyFit, or are you happy with the work they do? Stay massive. Um, yeah, I mean, if you bench in 250, I haven't seen too many guys that sort of only bench 80. Mm. Um, squat 250. Yeah, squat 250. Yeah, that's a big discrepancy. Bench yeah, 80. Fuck. Um, but uh, I don't know. Uh, <coughs> without seeing how you train or without seeing your physique, it's sort of very hard. Yeah. But yeah, just a lot of those those big compound lifts, your, your heavy bench, your heavy dumbbell bench, your heavy incline bench, mm. heavy weighted dips, heavy overhead press, mm -hmm. um, those kind of exercises are things you just want to make sure you're incorporating. That's right. Um, Benching, and this comes straight from the book of, uh, of uh, Westside Barbells, Louis Simmons, when I met with Louis. Louis said to me, uh, and he, this is an interview on our YouTube channel, you should go check it out. Just type in Louis Simmons on the Massive Joe's YouTube channel. Mm. Um, benching is not a chest movement, it is an upper trap and tricep movement. Mm. That's it comes straight from Louis. Mm. That's what he said. Yeah. So if you have trouble with your bench, you need to work on your triceps and your upper traps. Yeah. So a lot of like, yeah, yeah stuff like that. So a lot of heavy, as I said, heavy weighted dips will, yep. will build those tries up phenomenally. Yep. Um, I'm not such a fan of close grip bench, but you've got close grip bench as well that'll help there. But yeah, just, just it's hard to see without your training, as I said. Mm. I mean, um, th there's a massive difference, and you see this when you ever go to any gym about sort of the intensity people put in and, mm. and the, the kind of weights they're throwing around. Mm. If you don't train for those big lifts, then you're never going to get sort of stronger. So, yeah. Rogerio Custodio. Rogerio's back, big knee. Mm. From Sydney, Australia. What do your training splits look like right now? I'm changing mine because I'm going to be able to train more often, going from four to five sessions a week. And I'm struggling a little. Thanks for the help. P.S. Regarding Sydney Store, if it helps speed up the process, I'm willing to look up commercial rental properties myself pro bono. Just let me know what and where you want, and I'll come up with the goods. Neve, hit Rogerio up. You may have the insight. I don't know what you do for a job, Rogerio, but I'm guessing it's got to do with commercial real estate. If you actually do commercial real estate, Rogerio, yeah. then hit me up at steve at massivejoes.com. Steve at massivejoes.com. If you're just a average, av avid, avid, avid watcher, yeah. uh, I can probably take care of it. Yeah. Um, back to the question. Back to the question. Yeah. Um, What's your training split look like? I do push pull legs, as I said. Yeah. Uh, F45 in the morning or a walk. I, 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 a lot of people ask me that, so I'll just, I'll just list it out. Do it. I do three types of training. Yeah. F45. Yeah. Push pull legs, weight training, or cardio. Mm -hmm. I pick two of those exercises, yep. and I do them every day. Yep. So I'm training twice a day yep. in one of those three forms of training. Yeah, I would call you a flexible trainer. Yeah. Or, so or if or if it, if it fits your workout. Yeah. So I'll I'll see how I'm feeling, and I'll and I'll do that. Um, I mean, like uh, what, like choose what is it now? Taste Thursday. It's a Tuesday. Yeah. I did F45 in the morning yep. and went for a walk at night. Yep. Yesterday morning, Wednesday, went for a walk in the morning, did weight training at night. This morning did F45, doing weight training at night. Mm -hmm. So every day is different. Like tomorrow I'll probably go for a walk in the morning and then weights at night. So How many, let me ask you a question, how many possible combinations are there if you have three variables? Three? No, three factorial, three by two by one equals six. It's oh. good maths, it's true. Oh, yeah, wait. Oh. Possible oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you're talking about different times of the day as well, yeah, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Shit in bed. Fucking hell. <laughs> God, that's my, uh, whole, my whole week sorted, really, isn't my, it? Uh, my, my training split looks like this, Rogerio. Monday, I train back. Tuesday, I train chest with a push focus. Wednesday is usually a rest day. Thursday, I'll train arms. Friday, I'll train shoulders. Uh, Saturday, I train chest with a fly focus, and Sunday, I train legs. Mm. That's the split. The split of the gods right there. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. Harry, how often do you change that split up? 
Uh, well, I just recently changed it. Mm. Like from the start of this year, I changed it because I used to train legs on Friday, have Sundays off. Yeah. And then I decided that I wanted to train Sundays because I got a little bit more time. Yeah. And I can spend more time training legs at the gym because my leg workouts go for like two and a half fucking mm. hours. Um, so I just recently I changed it up. I go. change it whenever I feel like I need to change. To be yeah. honest. Harry L sixteen. Hey fellas, Harry from Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia here. First up, got to say the Neve comment about not being able to see his little Snickers bar had me laughing hysterically for a good 10 <laughs> seconds. Didn't have Neve laughing. No. <laughs> had Neve crying. Quite hurtful. Uh, my question is targeted at Joe specifically. Do you think going to university and obtaining your engineering and law degree helped you in the long term or did it just put you tens of thousands of dollars into debt? Mate, did you just see the three factorial thing I did? That's engineering yeah. right there. Yeah. That's fucking, that's, that's worth four years of study. Just yeah, grab you drop that. Yep. Um, I.e., do you think studying helped you with the rise of MJ as a business or do you think you could have obtained the same growth without your degrees? Sorry for the long question, fellas. Keep up the good work as always. Stay massive. Very good question, Harry. A question that I get quite frequently, as a matter of fact. Um, I think that university taught me how to think. Um, studying engineering taught me how to think logically and strategically and analytically, helped me activate the analytical side of my, of my brain, of my mind, whereas law taught me how to think creatively. Um, so the complete opposite side of my, my mind. So I really think that my time at university, although it was very expensive and did uh, you know, put me in, in closer to hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt with those two degrees, um, I think that it, it was definitely worth it. Um, and I don't think that Massive Joe's would be as successful if I didn't have those life experiences because I just wouldn't possess the skills necessary to activate the different types of thinking required to, to run this business in particular. And this business is a really good example of that because it, it, is a, it is a very contrasting business in the fact that we have a very analytical side of the business and then we have a very creative side of the business with all of the content that we do. Um, so it really kind of has fed off my personal life experiences and a big part of that was university. <laughs> I think I spent way too fucking long at uni. I think I could have got you know, most of that effect in you know, four years instead of seven, but you know, it is what it is, man. Mm. Nick Hanna, six. Hasn't told us where he's from. Are we going? Are we, what are we doing this week? Are we? Are we? Are we? Are we just dropping it? Or are we going to let it slide? You've been quite. You've been quite lenient this week. Yeah. I think we let it slide. Yeah. Okay. And we answered his question last week. Where's Nick from? Uh, he's from Cincinnati. Nick Hanna from Cincinnati, Ohio, United States. Thanks for answering my question last week, big boys. I have another one for you. I'm 22 years old, 86 to 87 kg, staying quite lean and only three kilograms up from my stage weight and currently in my off season. I'm consuming roughly 280 protein, 300 carb, 130 fat, and I'm maintaining my weight. Fuck, mm. that's a big caloric intake for an 86 kilogram guy. Mm. Good for you, man. Uh, I'm looking to put on some more weight and build muscle. I do not feel like I need any additional carbs since I'm already consuming 300. Would you guys recommend consuming more protein, carbs, or fat? Note that I do not have a problem consuming calories, just not sure which macronutrient increase the calories should come from. Joe, when you are reverse dieting, is there a limit of each macronutrient in which you will not go over, or is it a progressive increase in all three? Anyway, thanks heaps for being the people's company. Greatly appreciate all the content produced. Um, I think for how much you're weighing your fats, probably you shouldn't go too much higher than where they are now. Yep, agreed. Um, me, myself, I go a bit higher than you do on, on protein. On protein. Yep. So, I mean, your protein probably bump up a bit there, but I mean, if, if you're putting away 300 grams of carbs and not really having any issue with body fat or body composition, then increase you could probably the increase them as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, fuck who doesn't want to eat more carbs? Yeah. Man, Nick, you know, it really, there's, there's, no, there's no general rule, man. Um, you know, what I do, and, uh, you know, I've worked with a bunch of competitive athletes as, as a coach and coached a bunch of competitive athletes to the stage and in reverse darts and contest preps and off-seasons and whatnot. And, like, legit, everyone is different. I have athletes that have gone up to, man, I think one of my athletes last year in his off-season was, like, 550 grams of carbs a day. 
um, and protein similar to yours, fat similar to yours, just because we found that that was the best way to get him extra calories. And his metabolic rate was so fast um, that carbs was just the easiest way to do it. Whereas I have guys who are very carb sensitive, like big nevos, they might have a bit of insulin resistance or whatnot. So they'll be much higher in proteins and fats and will keep their carbs quite low because we know that if we increase the carbs, it's gonna put body fat on them. Mm. Um, so it really depends, man. But you know, just looking at that, I agree with Neve. I don't think your fats need to come up much more. Um, so it's gonna come from either proteins or carbs. Mm. So as I said, yeah, if, you, if your carbs go up, I mean, if you, if you can get your carbs as high as possible as well, yeah, um, while staying leanish, it means when you do means when you contest do, yeah. prep, yeah, it's going to be a lot easier for you. Yeah, so. yeah, you're not going to have to, you know, do carb cycling and shit because you're starting at a 500 per 500 carb per day intake, mm. um, and you can cut that back a number of times and still be eating 200 grams of carbs and shredded as fuck. Yeah. So, you know, the one thing that I will say, Nick, is when I, when I flip the switch from like an off season or a reverse diet to a contest prep, um, my protein never changes. My protein intake stays the same year round. The two things that change are my carbs and my fats. And I never, carbs will never drop below 20% of my total caloric intake. Um, that's kind of the rule. So a lot of my caloric drops come from carbohydrates, which ties into exactly what Neve said. If you can get your carb intake as high as possible in the off season, the easier it comes when it when you flip the switch and start dieting for your next show. Unless you're like me and there is no off season. Right, well, you know, if you're just, you're just a shredded beast year round. Me and Doug Miller are just demi Phil demigods. Spencer. What, what, what is demigod? I don't know what a demigod is. That's an Olympus lab saying. Mm. Good. Phil Spencer. What's up, fellas? Phil from Chester here in the UK. With a question for the main man. I had a shoulder injury that progressively got worse over the last few weeks. I decided to see a physio and specialist. They identified that I have ripped my terrace minor. This caused me, uh, me to really struggle with certain movements such as bench press. The physio has suggested that I should switch my training routine to a more pull dominant workout than push. So my question is, what can you recommend in terms of recovery and the ratio of push versus pull exercises? As always, stay massive. I mean, it feels, it's hard because we're not physios. Um, I don't really want to tell you what to do when you've got an injury because me and Joe both aren't uh, qualified, qualified to, do to so. be doing that. Yeah. Um, when I've torn muscles before, mm. like from personal experience, I've always trained through them to, because I've never only ever had grade one tears. Mm. So they haven't been bad. They're not grade three, torn off the bone kind of things. Yeah. So I've sort of worked through them just, and I've always kept my routine exactly the same. Mm. Obviously, changing up slightly if something is causing a lot of discomfort. Like but bench press, for example. Before. Yeah, yeah, but um, just going dropping right back to like twenty percent of your of your normal weight, yeah. and just working blood through that. It might take you four or five weeks to try and yeah. get back to sort of putting it's, a bit of strength strength on the bar. But yeah, look, Phil, man, it depends what grade the tear is through your mm. terrace minor. I mean, do you need surgery on it? Um, yeah. Is it that bad, or is it just something that's going to heal itself? I mean, we we need a little bit more information here, mm. Phil. But generally speaking, if you have a tear of any sort and a particular exercise is aggravating that tear, stop fucking doing the exercise. Mm. I would do some other shit. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily go and do more of a, a pull dominant workout. Probably if I'd still keep doing what you're doing. I mean, it, I, it's, it's the same as if like a, I know you, you're a, you're a soccer fan or football fan for over there. But if um yeah, if, I mean, someone does a grade one tear of their hamstring. Mm. Like they, they don't go and rest it, they'll go start walking immediately. Yeah. Like a couple of days afterwards and they'll try and get them back in that active recovery and active. Exactly. Um, Pushing just blood in there, blood delivers nutrients, nutrients yeah. help healing. Yeah. And um, um, so, I mean, when I when I tore my lat and my tricep at the same time, they were both grade one, but I trained through them. Um, I that put, was fucked. Yeah. I remember that. I used um, prototype eight. That on, was bad. Yeah. I used do you have a photo of that? I do. You do? Dylan, put the photo up for the, for the viewers who don't remember when Neve tore his I've got that photo. Uh, the good one is the photo you oh. took of it. That's so bad. On Snapchat. But yeah. Yeah, um, yeah and I, I just kept training through it. I took Prototype 8 because it promoted oxygen and nutrient rich blood flow to that muscle group. Yeah. Um, and I put that on like three or four times a day just to keep mm. blood flowing to the muscle. Mm. Um, and yeah, I, I was back sort of rolling quite heavy again uh, sort of three, four weeks later. So. Mm. Sean Jordan. Hey guys, Sean Jordan here from Gillies Plains, South Australia. 
This may be a little bit long, but firstly, I wanted to give a praise for how good of a company this is. It is by far the best supplement company in this state, if not the whole country. I used to be online as it can be easier an option, but after going into TMJ stores, I'm always going into store to get new subs now as all of the workers at all of the stores I have been to are very welcoming and offer very good advice. How do you think I did with that? I wrote that myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sean. We appreciate that. I didn't know that. Sure. That's legit. That's mm. Sean wrote that. I appreciate that, man. We mm. appreciate that. Thank mm. you for taking the time for the positive feedback. Mm. Uh, secondly, now to my question. Neve, if you were to start competing as Joe keeps telling you to, what category of federations would you compete in? Have a fucking mad day, you legends. You have a great day too, Sean. Uh, I do bodybuilding. Mm. It wouldn't be physique because I have nowhere near men's physique kind of physique shape. Shape. Um, but yeah, it'd be bodybuilding. I, I, I've got no preference preference to any federation at all. So I mean, it'd be yeah. it'd be like you just do as many as you could. I'd say. Yeah, and that I'd, would be my advice. I'd say do them all. The thing I is, is I do IFBB because it's the IFBB. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want to compete in the IFBB in terms of bodybuilding? Um, I mean, NABBA has produced some fucking phenomenal bodybuilders in the past. Yeah. I mean, Arnold being one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've, I've got... Oh, uh, yeah, I've got... I don't give a shit, to be honest. You do bodybuilding, and my advice to you would do as many different federations yeah. as you could. Yeah. Fuck it. Mm. Last question. Where's Pierre? Pierre didn't answer questions. Come on, this Pierre. Week, Fuck's sake, Pierre. Barney Ong from Melbourne, Victoria. Australia, if that is indeed where he is mm. at this point in time. Big dog. Now I know we may be in different age groups, but I was wondering if you had to change your training style now from when you were say 21 years old. For me, ever since I hit the big 3-0 last year, I've just experienced more soreness and aches, especially around my joints. So I figured I may have to look into changing my training style as, as I age. Joe, feel free to chime in here because I know you've passed the big 3-0 mark as well. Mm. I can't believe Barney's 30. Yeah. I thought he was like 17. Yeah, fuck he's... Come on, Barney. <laughs> when, did, when did he get to 30? <laughs> the fuck, Barney? I remember him saying that he was like 28. Like, yeah, obviously a couple of years ago at the Arnold or something. I can't say. I've, ne I've never asked. Because uh, well, yeah, well, obviously when we're in Melbourne for the Arnold, we, like Barney comes and we chill with Barney a fair bit. And yeah. I remember we were walking somewhere yeah. and he was making all of us guess how old he was. No, I wasn't there. Or yeah. well, maybe I just wasn't paying attention. Probably not paying because attention. Because I was like, this is yeah. bullshit. <laughs> Barney's clearly 17. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm fucking with you again, Barney. I got all the fucks with Barney. <laughs> I fuck with Barney. Yeah. Me and um, Barney get down. Uh, the main two things that I've had to change, I mean, I'm exactly the same now. I'm sore like all the time. You can't um, take overtraining solution. So you need overtraining solution and core flex yeah. in your life. That's what you need. So the, the three things I do now what? is I see Jake Watson for massage. Yes, so my man. How do, what do you explain that? It's not massage. It's like, what do you call it's it? It's deep tissue massage. Deep tissue massage. Yeah. So I get deep tissue massage because my, my muscles get very tight. Mm -hmm. Number two is I have to warm up a lot differently than what I used to, even compared to fucking three or four years ago when I used to train with you. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, as I said before, I always do like an isolation exercise first or I always do things a lot lighter to begin with, whereas I used to just go in straight to bench and fucking start throwing the dumbbells around. Mm -hmm. That fucking scares the shit out of me now. Mm -hmm. like I'll go do pec flies, I'll go do tricep broke press downs, I'll go do like side raises or front raises. I'll go do all those kind of shoulder exercises first before mm -hmm. I go into heavy benching just to make sure everything's like warmed up and mm -hmm. moving freely. Mm -hmm. So warming up has been huge for me the past sort of well, six to 12 months especially. Yeah. Um, what was the third one I was going to say? And also just not going as heavy as I was. Mm -hmm. um, I used to, mind muscle yeah, connection. I used to go in there and I used to just throw, throw the dumbbells around all the time, mm. try and see if I could bench the 65s and get fucking four terrible reps and mm. just use more tendons to bounce out of the bottom than actually any muscle. Mm. Um, what did I train last night? I trained chest. Mm. I trained chest, chest, shoulders and tries last night. And the heaviest weight I used was 12 kilogram dumbbells. Big boy. So there you go. Um, yeah, so, uh, and 
yeah, to, I'm just not going, whereas I used to go in, I used to go, and when I used to train with Joe a lot as well, used to go in and do reps of 140, 150 kilos on bench press. Mm. We used to go in chuck 110, 120 kilos on the incline bench. Mm. We used to go probably decline, do the dumbbells for 50, 55, 60 kilo dumbbells. Mm. Yeah, I, if, I, if I'm going to an incline like dumbbells, they're probably like the 35s, 40s at the heaviest now. I think what happens if I'm doing is, If I'm doing incline is, bench, it's like the 60 or 80 kilo on a barbell, that's yeah. all. So. What happens is as you get older, you become a little bit more conscious about taking care of yourself. Um, so you do start doing things like Neve said, like you warm up, you look at getting deep tissue massage and remedial therapy and those sorts of things done frequently to stay on top of, you know, being, being um, uh, proactive with injuries instead of reactive. So trying not to get injured in the first place. You start looking at, you know, one thing for me personally is my supplementation is, you know, I take a lot more um, supplements now that are targeted at preventing injuries and, and increasing recovery than I used to. Overtraining Solution, Core Flex, NR, um, you know, are some of the top ones that I take that are primarily, you know, focused on, on keeping me injury free. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's just a, it's just a, I guess you kind of become a little bit more, more aware of your limitations. Yeah. And pay a little bit more attention to taking care of yourself. Yeah. Instead of just becoming a mass monster. Prehab. Mm. Next topic of discussion, Eve. Uh, story time with Eve. Yes! Yes! We have a story this week. Yeah. I love this story. I'm just going to let you tell it. You know what it is. We discussed it beforehand. I was like, you're telling this story. So, weekly web. I, everyone, or everyone knows obviously I'll follow low carb, but sort of twice a week, I'll have a high carb meal. Cheat meal. Cheat meal. Yep. So a high carb cheat meal. Yep. So, um, couple nights ago I had Dumpling King, so I had mm. chicken and rice yeah, and and four Krispy Kreme donuts. I didn't, I didn't give me two glazed, normal glazed, but I don't eat normal glazed. Normal glazed is the best. So, so OG, man. I ate um, some Krispy Kreme donuts. Yeah. But it's funny because so many people DM'd me afterwards and like, you didn't really eat that. I'm like, yes I did. Yeah, I did. Trust me, I did. <laughs> Trust me, I did. Um, <laughs> so yeah, and then so, and generally like a Saturday or a Sunday night is one of them, and then midweek I'll have sushi or um, Krispy Kremes. Yeah, sort of stuff like that. I haven't had Krispy Kremes in ages, but I've been having sushi a bit during sort of midweek. Um, but yeah, decided to order Uber Eats at, on like last Sunday night at about nine o'clock or nine thirty. Now it was getting very close to like the time that, that Mr. Pizza, who actually, if you ever go back to the story of how I got the name Neve, mm. and Joe's been there and Joe's eaten there before with me. I have. Um, Mr. Pizza and Kebab. Yeah. Up in fucking Modbury. Yeah. I love uh, that place at the Hope Valley Shopping Centre. So, uh, funny thing is, called Mr. Pizza and Kebab, pizza and kebabs are shit. <laughs> ribs, delicious. They fucking don't do the ribs anymore. They don't do the ribs! No. Oh, man! <laughs> so, oh, uh, God, that was the best thing. Well, you can't order it on Uber Eats, so that was the problem. Fuck. I don't know if they're going there, they might have. But anyway, that's something for next weekend. <laughs> um, <laughs> that goes back to our question, what do you do on the weekends? I yeah. fucking plan my cheat meals. Yeah. All right, so, um, yeah. And I was, it was about 9 o'clock and it shut at 9.30 and I'd yeah. just gotten out of the shower. Yeah. And I couldn't be fucked really putting too many clothes on. I couldn't be fucked going out driving. So I ordered Uber Eats. And I was fucking starving at this stage as well. I'm like, fuck, I'm just going to order Uber Eats by the time I get dressed and order yeah. and wait for them. Yeah. Like, it'll yeah. be here anyway. So I got ordered, ordered Uber Eats. And then it's like, you know how it gives you the countdown? Mm -hmm. So I, 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 wanted, I ordered a small pizza because yeah. I didn't want to go too overboard. And I ordered like a sweet potato fries. Yeah. So it was a, like a big meal. Mm. Because well, whenever, whenever I order like a large or extra large pizza, family pizza, yeah. I never touch the sweet potato fries. Yeah. And every time I think I'll get a small pizza. So I got a small pizza anyway, and then fucking press order, and it's like, your order be ready in like 21 minutes or something. Yeah. So I look at my phone, look at my app, and it's 21 minutes the order arrives, and yeah. I thought, sweet, it gives me a bit of time, so I just, I don't even know I did time. Dry yourself off. Yeah, dried myself off. Still hadn't put clothes on at this point. Shook my dick around, did a few helicopters, <laughs> few, sent, a, sent a helicopter to a few lucky ladies on Snapchat. <laughs> Once I'd wait a bit of blood in it though. <laughs> oh god. Anyway, so we've got decided to put jocks on for yeah. for the Uber driver for yeah. when he drops it off, so I at least I'm wearing <laughs> pants. <laughs> that episode of The Simpsons when he rocks up and he's wearing like a fucking yeah. Uh, yeah. A paper bag as yeah. as pants. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it says orders ready, like orders yeah. been picked up by the Uber driver. I'm like fucking fantastic. Yeah. How long till it arrives? Twenty one minutes. Twenty minutes until it arrives from the dude picking up from my house. I'm like, how the fuck is this possible? Mr. Pizza and Kebab is a three minute drive from my house. You could walk there in 20 minutes. Yeah. So you're thinking to yourself, this motherfucker's walking. <laughs> <laughs> I look, and do you have to beat this out? I apologize. Yeah. But the 
is riding a fucking bicycle. <laughs> and it's a fucking like, it's not a quick bike ride. It's not like he's going two streets down the road. No. My house is a good like five k's from Mr. Pizza and Kebab, and it's hilly as well. Yeah, right? it's, it's so not, in a car, it's yeah. like three to five minutes. Yeah. but on a bike, it's yeah. like it's, it's like not fun. It's hard work. So it took me. It took him twenty minutes to ride his fucking bicycle to my house, and then he couldn't even find my house. Yeah. So I was, and when I saw he was on a bike, I was in the mindset of, do I go and like look at my app, and then try and cut him off halfway <laughs> and just like him. take the bag off him. <laughs> So yeah, that was my story. Uh, so when the when the food arrived, was it still hot? No, it was cold as well. Cold. Yeah. yeah. So you had to put it in the fucking oven. Yeah, but I didn't obviously didn't, couldn't because they closed because I, I that was the point of it is I wanted yeah. to order it so I didn't have to uh, get it before they closed. Yeah, put clothes on and drive there. Yeah. I could not. Because it's such a long drive. I missed out on quality helicopter time. Fuck it out. Fuck. Oh shit, Nick. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? Uh, long episode this week. Come down to the uh, Arnold Strongman event on, uh, yes, on HQ Sunday. on Sunday. Yeah, 10.30 a.m. It's going down. It's going to be a good day. Good weather as well. Mm. It'll be good, good fun. I'm looking mm. forward to it. Mm. Hit the subscribe button. Is subscribe. it still there? Yeah, yeah, it is. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to, once you've subscribed, turn your post notifications on, both on your mobile or cell phone and your desktop PC so you don't miss a beat when it comes to the Massive Joe's YouTube channel. Until next week, where we come and tour from Nice.